Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thank you for checking out another episode of the Celebrity Jobber Podcast, one of the top shows on Apple Podcasts' music podcast charts. Please subscribe. We'll love a five-star rating, leave a review. Past episodes are up on CelebrityJobber.com. It's a pretty interesting story uh, with my next guest, who I have been a fan of for a long time, but had no idea he's from where I'm from. And his family ran a pretty successful family business. I think Jeff Ross could have very easily ended up working in his family business and not be known as the Roastmaster General. I mean, maybe if just a few things happened differently in his life. And let's face it, the times have changed. Forget the last 10 or 20 years, but times have changed the last five years. And when you make your living as an insult comic, it could be kind of a scary world. Think about some of the comedians who said something, quote unquote, too soon, and they were finished. Think about some comedians who told, quote unquote, insensitive jokes, and you've never heard from them again. Jeffrey Ross, an insult comic. It's what his whole act is about. The Roastmaster General. What was his big break and his first job? We'll find out next here on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber Podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Let me tell you something. All the years I've been doing this, um, and and I'm a big fan of comedy, I'm like going through your your whole shtick last night trying to find out something about the Roastmaster General, and I'm like, oh my God, we grew up in the same place. I was from, you know, lived in Warren uh, my whole life, uh, well, until my dad moved us to Florida in the middle of the night back when I was in the eighth grade, but that's another story. But my grandmother lived in Springfield. She lived in General Green Village. Um, I know the, oh, wow. the Clinton Manor. I, I know, I know, <laughs> I know everything. And I was just like, wow, I, I can't, you know, you should get my hair cut at Guido and Aldo's. I don't know if you've ever gotten I your hair. I love it. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 49. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. You remember so, everything. Jeff, do you find that there is somewhat of a, an affinity for other people from New Jersey? There's like a special connection, or are you trying to run away from people like me? <laughs> I learned a long time ago, there's no running away from your past, which is fine. Right. Uh, I, I love finding Jersey people, especially when I'm not in Jersey. Right. It's like a nice connection. And uh, we all have thick skin. We can take a joke. We bust balls. We're like family. I just find it so often that when I find out somebody's from New Jersey, I just start taking a jog down memory lane and start throwing, you know, uh, landmarks at them. And sometimes they'll they'll play along. And then sometimes they're like, yeah, OK, let's go. Next question. <laughs> um, so I, I wanted to I wanted to ask you um before comedy, you were yeah. going. You were going along a different path altogether. Tell me about about growing up and what you wanted to be when you grew up. Oh wow! I figured I'd be a musician. Really? I grew up in the catering business, and I wanted to be a rock star, like a lot of comics. But I wasn't good enough guitar player. I didn't have that musical ability, but I had good timing. So comedy was sort of a happy accident. I was in college, went to film school, didn't really, knew I was gonna get out of Jersey somehow. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't gonna be a caterer like everybody in my family. Yeah. That was the family biz. Your, your family biz was a catering business and did your whole family work there? Yeah, we did, we did. My cousin Rona's staying with me right now. She used to work there and the show that I'm doing um is about that it's about my family it's about growing up in the catering business um i found old films of my great grandma rosie who ran this catering hall clinton manor in newark and then union and restored them and uh kind of wrote some stories and jokes to the films 
and music that goes along with it. So growing up, family business is the catering business. You go to school. Did I read this right? You kind of got into the radio station. You, you know, you, maybe you wanted to be in, in radio. Did you get into the? I definitely the- wanted to be in radio more than anything. I loved it. And and I was music director of my college radio station at Boston University. And uh, definitely dived into new wave and punk rock. And those were good times. Those were really good times. You studied radio. Then you got out of college. And then what, Jeff? Didn't you have a real job at some point? A real job? Uh, a real job? You don't think comedy is a real job? No, no. No, I think I think you're living a dream. I mean, I think you're, I think, no, it's not because not everybody is a stand-up comedian, you know? I mean. That's true. Back then, everybody was. You're right. <laughs> All right. No, I get it. Everybody's, just, yeah, ex- even when they weren't, Jeff. Everybody was a, you go to, uh, you know, uh, Thanksgiving. Everybody's a stand-up comedian, even though. Even though they weren't. I had an Uncle Freddie. Oh, boy, I could tell you a story. So you graduate college, and then did you get into the real world, or did you pursue comedy right away? Uh, I started developing a production company with a college friend. We wanted to go into video production after film school in Boston. And that was hard. That was hard starting your own business. And my other pal, Mark Chapin, who I went to college with, said, you know, I took this comedy class. I think you'd be good at it. Why don't you take it? And I kind of like was like, huh? And he explained to me what it was and that he thought I would be good at it. And I wound up doing it. But it's not it's yeah. not just telling jokes. Right, Jeff. I mean, a lot of people, they got to be like, hey, I'm a funny guy. I can do what you do. It's not that, though. Right. I mean, there's a lot more to it. There's an art form. There's a premise. There's all this stuff that you have to learn. You can't just walk up on stage and be a comedian. When when did you develop this skill to be known as the roast master general? Because it's different. Uh-huh. It, you're, you're, you're not just a comedian. You annihilate people. I'm sure they come up to you on the street and go, do me. You know, that's got to be, <laughs> that's got to be annoying, right? <laughs> no. I mean, it's only, it's not, I'm so used to it that I would never let it bother me. I love what, I love this little niche that I've carved out. It's the best. And, you know, yeah, there's more to it, but it's also, it's ingrained in me. So it comes out whether I want it or not. Uh, The fact that I was able to tap into it is what's great and what's very lucky. And I got to thank my friends who encouraged me early on. For getting me there it's pretty cool was it your uncle murray uh that that was uh, kind of the i don't want to say the inspiration but he was a guy that busted your balls and your family to where you kind of maybe got a little bit from him he was the king of the ball busters in my family <laughs> he ran the he ran the catering hall where where i worked as a young boy and then as a teenager and um I'm looking at a picture of him right now. He was a great guy, and and uh, he was a World War II hero, army medic, uh, helped liberate a concentration camp, and a real inspiration. and And he's another kind of launching point to the show that I'm doing. It's called "Take a Banana for the Ride," and it's basically about resilience and bouncing back and going through some hard stuff and coming out the other side. Uh, and keep it on going. Something that people probably need right now. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how people say that there's a connection between comedy and pain? You had a rough upbringing. You lost both of your parents at an early age. There's some pain. There's some sadness in there. Do you find that to be to be truthful? I don't think I'm a sad person, but I think that comedy comes from pain. Yeah, I think, you know... You get knocked down a little bit. Humor will help push you through. And that's kind of where I'm at in my writing now, looking back at those times. I think I think it's very healing. I think people go laughter is the best medicine. And it sounds like a cliche, but I actually think it's it's pretty on the money. Can you think back, Jeff, to a particular moment in time where I don't know if it was a roast or an appearance on TV or a particular gig but a, a, a moment in your life that everything changed for you right after what? This, right now, this, right now, <laughs> 6.30 a.m. Let's go, Jeff. Come on. Bring it, baby. 
So there, there had to be, you know, you being a stand-up comedian and then transition to the, the roast master general. So, you know, and then something happened. Was it a roast? What was the moment where your life changed? Well, getting on that stage for the first time was pretty big. Just doing that was very exciting. I loved the energy of just talking into a microphone in public and the idea of free speech and being able to say whatever you want. And I thought that would be enough. But over time, I just saw it taking over my, my life and decided that I was all in. And that was pretty risky and scary. Like I had a college degree, but yet here I was running around New Jersey and New York and Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, and Massachusetts, doing comedy shows for 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever it was, and working my way up where I was making a few hundred bucks a week going, Hey, I'm actually surviving as a comic. So right. you don't think of it as a big break, but you think of it as these kind of step by step, joke by joke, gig by gig, check by check. And if you could enjoy that, if you can dig that, enjoy the process uh you can go the distance obviously you know getting booked on david letterman in 1995 that was big and obviously the first roast coming out in 97 98 that was big so it's hard to point to any one moment you know the i wouldn't blank you with b arthur's blank <laughs> kind of moment <laughs> that was a big one you know but you never know what's gonna hit right so it's all kind of a series of happy accidents and little mini, mini celebrations and mini explosions that, that kind of got me here. Were you working as, you know, in another field? Were you working another job as you were working to become a comedian? Did you have to have, did you have to moonlight? Did you have to work at the catering business at, at any point in time? What, what else did you do when you were trying to climb up the ladder in comedy? You know what I would do? I, I got a car. My sister got in a car accident and she bought me a Jeep. And once I had the Jeep, I was able to, instead of getting a day job, I was able to be the guy that could pick up the other comedians <laughs> okay, and drive them to the gigs. And that way I would get the job as the MC or the opener. Uh, so being the driver for Dave Chappelle and Jay Moore and these kind of people really helped. But uh, luckily, because my parents had passed away, I had a little bit of a nest egg that I was able to use just to survive long enough to get through my open mic phase of my career. So, wow, uh, another happy act. <laughs> right, right. What about your first job? Was your first job in your family business? Or did you work outside of that business? Shoveling snow and rolling meatballs and working in the hat check at the catering hall. I was all in on the catering, on the family business. Was that it? was my life. That was yeah. it. Seemed like a pretty secure gig, you know? If I could go back now and go into my dad's architecture business and not screw around here, I think I I think I would uh, would go back tomorrow. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sound like you're you're right at home. I don't know. I am right at home, but I'm I'm having a lot of fun, but uh, you know, I I I I'm a long way from retirement, Jeff. I see what you're saying. <laughs> you know, it's I don't really look back too much, but it just seemed like a natural path to get out of the business. My 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 dad passed away, so the catering business was kind of not quite what it was, and and I just wanted to do something creative. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a creative person, and I think that was driving me to to try new things, and I wanted to see the world. And comedy's been an incredible backstage pass to the world. Man, it's been it's been great talking to you, man. Seriously, I, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. And again, just for the very first time last night, I'm going through, you know, your bio and I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is from where I'm from. This is incredible. The Jersey Shore, let's just face it, ruined it for most of us. I never saw the show, but um, I do remember when the situation came to the Donald Trump roast, it was, it was a pretty memorable moment in the roast uh, world. Hey, I'll never forget my Jersey roots. I got my born to roast tattoo last year on my right shoulder. So that's awesome. I'm in for life. But I'm in for life, Jeff. Are you scared at all, Jeff? I mean, you see people like Lisa Lampanelli, who I love, and she got out because the times have changed. What do you mean? What are you saying? Being an insult comic, everybody is so t uptight. Everybody is 
So, you know, are you worried about being in these times and those people that, you know, they're shutting people down? Yeah. It's, I think the roast, this Tom Brady roast, helped correct that a little bit. Yeah. A lot, at least that's what a lot of comedians are telling me, which is really cool. I love that. So I don't think I live in fear, but I, it's on my mind sometimes. But what am I supposed to do? You know, people don't want their, you know, I'm coming down to Tampa. Like, people don't want their comedy watered down. They want their comedy potent. It's like medicine. So to start watering stuff down to please people who aren't even buying tickets is right. not a good business plan. So screw them. I do what I want. People want to come. They want to get it full on, like right in the gut. My show doesn't hold back at all. My show is intense. It's funny and it's emotional and it's fun. And if you're not into that, I don't need you. Right. <laughs> the RoastmasterGeneral.com coming to Ferguson Hall, the Straz Center in Tampa, the Plaza Live in Orlando. Again, the RoastmasterGeneral.com for all the information on when and where uh, the Roastmaster General Jeff Ross is going to be. Really pleasure. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much. Uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing you one of these days. Maybe I'll see you in Tampa in a couple of weeks. That, that sounds good. You've got to come to the show, Jeff. All this Jersey research. You're yeah. going to love the show, baby. <laughs> it's called Take a Banana for the Ride. You're going to love it. Take a banana come, come for as, the ride. All right. Come as my guest. Bring your ugliest, fattest friend. I've got a lot of them. All right, Jeff. Thank All you right. again. I appreciate your time. Thank you, brother. Uh, really cool getting to know Jeff Ross and growing up a little bit. Uh, you know, he grew up in the same area that I grew up and his family's business was a catering business that I've heard of in Union, New Jersey. That's where my parents are from. And I think it would have been very easy for Jeff Ross to, you know, slip into that business. His parents, by the way, passed away both uh, when he was younger. I think mom and dad both passed away when he was in his mid to late teens. So he mentioned he had a little bit of a nest egg from his parents passing away, wanted to be a rock star, studied radio in college at Boston University, really got into music. But, you know, it was his family and busting balls in New Jersey, uh, his uncle Murray, pretty inspirational in Jeff's life as far as becoming a comedian and not only a comedian, he is an insult comedian. The Roast Master General, where he comes in, all these roasts, Tom Brady starts talking about his wife leaving him, him bailing out on his kids. I mean, goes for the jugular. And in this day and age where society is hypersensitive to being offended, I got a lot of respect for Jeff Ross and, and pretty much how he doubles down. On what he does. And there are comedians that have gotten canceled for going a little too hard these days. He's not afraid. When Jeff got out of college, him and a buddy of his wanted to form a video production company. That's kind of the direction he was going in as soon as he finished school. But comedy came calling. And like he said earlier, uh, no looking back could have very easily been Jeffrey Ross, owner manager of the Clinton Manor Caterers. You know, it was his first job. He said not only did he work there rolling meatballs, he shoveled snow there, worked the hat check. I mean, everything that had to do with that business, Jeff did it. Uh, he's got two shows booked in Florida, October 26th at the Straz in Tampa and the Plaza on October 27th. RoastmasterGeneral.com for all of his tour dates throughout the country. The Real Jeff Ross on Twitter was a great guest. I really enjoyed having him on. And thank you for listening to the Celebrity Jobber Podcast, one of the top shows on the music podcast charts on Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe. Would love a five-star rating and leave a review. Past episodes are up on CelebrityJobber.com. You can also check out YouTube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber and Celebrity Jobber underscore podcast on Instagram. As always, I thank you for listening to the Celebrity Jobber podcast. And until next week, I'm Jeff Zito.